on to part three, the roof and gables. Let's get to it. Basically, the shed came with the pieces and you just line them up and attach them together. I took the two by fours and lined the mitered pieces together, then used the gusset, lined that up to the edge, and then nailed them in place. I used my trusty finish nailer to hold them in place and then used the nails it came with to really get it to stick. I repeated that process two more times and I've gotten all three pieces to attach to the top of the walls. Once the three pieces were done, it was time for me to lift them up, climb that ladder, and affix it to the top of the walls. I drilled the holes on either side at an angle and then put two three inch screws to hit both the rafter, top of the wall, and down through the stud. Repeat for all. There was a lot of ladder maneuvering in this section of the build, if you haven't noticed. Gables time. Gables are basically the front and back portion of the peak, if that makes any sense. Uh, you basically take the two triangles and attach them together, then those triangles go on top of the wall and nailed and screwed in place. I climbed up my ladder, set the back gable up on top, very gently as you can see, and then nailed them in the back to hold it in place as I hammered and screwed it into its final destination. You repeat for the front, except this one has a little window, so you still line it all up and then hammer in place and then add the window. Easy peasy. I was a bit more nervous adding this one because of the window. I didn't want to drop it and break the glass everywhere. It's supposed to be a two-person job to add all the rafters and gables, but I did it by myself. So now I'm just screwing and nailing this little guy in place, and then I can do the trim to add the roof panels. I didn't have a second hand, so I used the next best thing, seat clamps. Oh my god, they were so useful. Also, that tag sticking out has been driving me crazy seeing this video and I wanna reach in and tuck it in or just rip it off and I can't and now I'm just annoyed. Anyhow, I lined the miter ends together, clamped them to hold, measured, marked, and then screwed them in place. Now, excuse me as I drop this little rigid tools ad. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not sponsored by anyone because I usually have no idea what I'm doing. So, yay. But no, seriously, look at that ad placement. <laughs> okay, now back to our regularly scheduled program. Repeat again for the back trims with the seat clamps. And after that, you're onto the roof panels. Slowly and carefully lift them up and over and then drop it on the floor. Bam! Just kidding, don't do that. This part actually called for three people to build, so I enlisted to help the can to just hold it really quickly in place for two minutes so I could just nail everything quickly to hold. And then once that was held in place, I nailed everything else down to the rafter stud. Oh boy, here it comes. I'm just gonna leave it on instrumentals now so you can enjoy this montage with that Michael Bay inspired shot. And also you might ask, why the bicycle helmet? I don't have a construction helmet and this was the next best thing. If you don't like it, then mail me. I've never used a chalk line before, as you can uh, see me tapping it. Yes, I know how to use one now, live and learn, but that was pretty funny. So anyways, yeah. After the panels of the roof were nailed down, I then took the roofing felt and laid it down to cut the sizes I need. Once cut, it was onto stapling it onto the roof. FYI, I didn't have a roof tackle staple thingy. I only had a staple gun and not a pneumatic one, but this just goes to show that you could still make your roof without all the fancy schmancy tools. Also, check out the lines on this. It really helped to line everything to make sure everything was straight. Once I got to the peak portion, I just stapled down and then folded it over and then made sure to overlap everything so that the water runoff wouldn't go under, if that makes sense. Man, it was so pretty outside. After stapling so many staples onto the roof and getting all of the roofing felt on top and overlapping it also on the other side so nothing dripped down into the roof or whatever, um, I took a hook blade and started slicing off the excess um, and just cleaned it up a bit. Yes, it looks a little jagged, but whatever, there's roofing shingles that are going over it, so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. No one is perfect. I have to remind myself that. Nothing can ever be absolutely perfect. Then I took the drip edge 
and started cutting it and placing that on top. This actually scared me because I was worried that I was gonna mess this up, but it was only a $4.32 mistake if I did mess up, so whatever. You just hammer it into the sides, and then um, I what I should have done was trimmed it first, but I learned that later, so this is how you trim it. I just measured, marked, cut with my tin snips, and then placed it on top and that seemed to be a lot easier than cutting it while it was on the roof. Not gonna lie, the roof portion probably took me a while to do. I was too scared to actually accomplish it so I kept pushing it off and pushing it off until finally I psyched myself up to finally do it and like I imagined it would be, it was a lot easier than I thought. I don't know why I continue to do this. I make these scenarios in my head that I won't be able to accomplish it, and so I don't think I can actually do it. But I did. And I couldn't finish it this one night, um, so I just uh, tarped it all off because it was going to rain and then continued on the next morning. But I do this to myself all the time, and this is one of the reasons why this shed build has taken me so long, is because I doubt myself all the time and there was a point where I cried too because I <laughs> and that sounds so stupid of me but I cried because I keep doing this to myself I make these stories in my head that I'll never be able to I'm never good enough I'm not talented enough I won't be able to do it and then I just start doing it and <sighs> I do it it's so weird okay but back to the build um, I just took all of the shingles and I staggered it so that the open lines weren't going to hit directly the roof paper. So you're staggering everything and there's going to be all this excess on there, which is fine because I'm going to take my hooked blade and slice that all off. But hot tip, use a needle nose plier to hammer in your nails. I didn't have a pneumatic nail gun to do this, so I hammered every single nail in there with my needle nose plier and my hammer. And then I took my chalk line, using it correctly this time, to show where I needed to cut, and then I used my hook blade to slice everything off. Uh, for me, it helped better to do it from the bottom and then trim it off from the top, if that makes sense. So slice underneath and then clean it up from the top. So I did this during a warm day to kind of make the shingles a little more malleable. Uh, I was going to use my heat gun if it was a little too cold. I'm thankful that I didn't need to use my heat gun. I also realized that uh, it was a lot more helpful for me to wear my gloves when chopping this. My hands hurt really bad, like I had a bunch of small cuts or something. I don't know if it was from the shingles or not, but it felt really weird, so I used gloves to slice. Now it's time for the ridge caps, the very last piece and same issue here. I wasn't actually going to use these pre-made ridge caps. I was going to just use overages from the shingles, but the lady, when I asked for the items that I needed, she put this in there. I don't know why, but um, now I have so many. Anyhow, uh, you just place the ridge caps on and then nail them in place. But I got confused because I didn't know how to end it. So I kind of just kept going and then realized that if I kept going, then I, the end of it wouldn't work. So then I flipped around and started going the other way so that then the ends would meet in the middle. Okay, it was getting really hot, so I had to take that off. But, uh... Yeah, I flipped around and started doing this, and then in the middle, I realized that I was gonna make the two ends meet, and I was like, oh my gosh, how do I, how do I cover this? I think I messed up, so whatever, I don't care. As long as it's keeping the rain out, I guess I'm okay. Okay, after realizing that those nails were gonna be shown if I don't cover it. I took a shingle, or not a shingle, well I guess an overage of my shingles and then a ridge cap and then sliced the shingle to the width of the ridge cap using my tin snips, which are amazing to cut shingles with. So 
Those helped also if I needed some extras that need to cut off on the sides. But anyway, then I took my exterior grade silicone. I hammered in that little piece to go over that little section that was going to cover up the rich caps. And then I covered the nails up with my black silicone, exterior silicone. Then I took some bits, extra bits of the shingles and used that to cover it up. And it looks like there's nothing there once it dried up. So, hey, it works, whatever. And this is me now saying, Roof, there it is. Yes, done. Thank you for watching. <laughs> No, seriously, thank you guys for stopping by and watching this little series of the shed build. Stay tuned for more, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like to see more of the shed build because I still gotta paint this and I still need to do the inside, so stay tuned. Thanks, bye.